Hi everyone, this is Samuel Bed Ghost, and I am here for a very special video. Now you're probably wondering why this one's not a video reaction. That's because today I'm actually going to be doing something very special. I have a dog here. No, this is not an actual dog. This is a stuffed animal dog. As you can tell. But being that I know people who have dogs and or ha are dog owners or you may have a cat or a fish or a bird or whatever I wanted to take the chance to explain to you guys uh, some things that I'm sure lots of pet owners you know basic information but more importantly some stuff you guys probably don't even know about your pets and so today's video is mainly going to be about dogs so I'm going to be sharing with you guys some information about them so that way hopefully you have the opportunity to learn more about our four-legged friends. So with that done out of the way, let's get started. Now as many of us have learned, dogs are descended from wolves, which of course I have a little poster right here of wolves and it actually uh, as opposed to that kind of changes, so... Yeah. I know this one's hard to see, but... There. That's what I wanted. But still, I want to um, address something important. With uh, wolves being the, being the main ancestors of dogs, uh, one of the important things to keep in mind with dogs is that because of their ancestors and even just possibly even their personality or their very nature, they will have a tendency to want to actually uh, be the ones in control. So whenever you get a dog, especially if it's a puppy or whatever, you have to make sure you establish a dominance. In other words, the dog has to learn you're the one in charge, not them. Uh, older dog owners will understand this completely. But, yeah, sometimes you need to be a little bit, you know, not necessarily mean, but aggressive or strict with them. Yeah, strict is a better word. Um, so that way they have an understanding that I'm the one in charge, not you, and there are certain rules you need to obey. This is especially true if you have any new additions to the family, for example, myself included, because... Um, just to give you an example, if you end up either gain another dog after you already have one or you inherit one because a family member's passed away or what have you, uh, you need to establish not only dominance but the rules that you establish in your household as well as outside so that way the animal is familiar with what you declare as your own rules for the dog itself rather than it trying to be in control of your life and establishing rules based on what it wants, not what you want. Another thing that's good to establish your relationship with your dog is not only stuff like pets, belly rubs, etc., but even training is another good example. Training basically is something that helps the dog to be stimulated. In other words, it helps make sure that they have something that they you know, can do not only with their trainer or owner, well, both basically, but even something just to keep them occupied. For example, squeaky toys or any other kind of toy you give the dog is a form of something that can get them interested and make it so that way they're not bored all the time. Train does a very similar thing to that. So, for example, I'm sure many of us have learned different things like sit, stay, speak, lie down, roll over, basic dog train, you know, sessions, or even just something that the dog can do. Now, one of the things that I want to uh, mention, and you might have heard of this or know about this, is Pavlov's dog. This was actually an experiment that a scientist did in order to determine what scientists call operant conditioning. What that means is that there's something that the animal desires the animal has a reaction to that, but they need to do something in order to receive that treat. So, for example, with Pavlov, what he ended up doing was I, he had 
um, a bell that the dog had to actually touch with its paw and, you know, push it down so that way the bell would ring. And once the bell would ring, then the dog would get the treat. And the reason it had to do that was because the reward was the treat. Once the dog saw the treat, it would start to, you know, lick its nose, its tongue would hang out. It was salivating, which means saliva was starting to drip from the tongue. So that was a reaction. So obviously the dog wanted the treat. It showed it wanted the treat, but it couldn't just get the treat on its own, just willy nilly. No, it had to actually do something. Which, of course, in the form of training was I have to go up to the bell, I have to touch my paw to it, press the bell. Once I press the bell, then I get the treat. If I don't do that, I don't get the treat. That's basically what Pavlov did in his experiment. And that's called Auburn Conditioning, which a lot of training is often used for. And you can use this with dogs, but also other animals as well. But you have to keep in mind what the animal's boundaries are, if they're interested, and even just in general, are they interested in the treat? Do they lose interest? What? And that's something I'm going to mention here right now, which is that when you are doing training, you have to be just as focused as the animal. Because if you get distracted by something, the animals get, get interested in what you just got interested in. Or if there's a distraction, it could, you know, deray or make them, you know, interested in something else like doorbell rings. Oh, who's at the door? Or there's a noise. Oh, what's that noise? You have to make sure the animal has your full attention. And granted, distractions happen at times and you have no control over that, given the circumstance. But nevertheless, make sure the dog, even if it gets distracted, redirects the dog's attention so that way, hey, 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 I have a treat, and or whatever you're trying to do, and then continue onwards, like I just demonstrated. In addition, it's important that once you establish that once the animal has done what you want it to do, you have three seconds to let that animal know, good, you did what I want you to do, and then give them the reinforcement or whatever it is you're going to do to reward them. That's something called a bridge. In other words, it lets the animal know that, hey, you did what I want you to do, good job, here's a treat, or whatever. Heck, even belly rubs or petting them or saying good boy, or even using something like a clicker, which uh, basically it's a little device where when you press it down, it makes a little click noise. Even something like that's a good way to establish a bridge between the trainer slash owner and the dog for when you do training like that. So obviously that's important. But yeah, um, and also if you have trouble with the train concept, ask an adult or someone who does understand what training is and they'll help you out. Food is obviously important for many different animals, cats and dogs included. But one of the important things that's important to remember is that, and I apologize I repeated myself, but um, one of the most important things that you get right, especially with dogs, both small and big, is you give them the correct kinds of food. It's been researched and even shown that if you give a small dog different food, like for a big dog, not only is that going to be hard for them to chew, but there are certain ingredients in both small and big dog food that either one cannot digest. This is done on purpose so that way the animals get the correct nutrition that they need. And I'm actually going to explain that in a different video, but that was another thing I wanted to address. Furthermore, you need to make sure that you have the food stashed somewhere or kept in a safe place where not only could little kids or other animals get into it but so you remember where the food is and who you need to give it to that's another thing that's important because you don't want to feed your animal the wrong kind of food in addition to there being many good kinds of food for your animal there are other certain foods that you have to definitely avoid one of the biggest ones and i'm sure many of us have heard is chocolate the reason chocolate isn't good for dogs is because the chocolate, the ingredients and such that's actually in chocolate, can actually affect the liver and other parts of the body. Furthermore, there are other bits of food like garlic or even other kinds of food you want to make sure your dog doesn't get into. Another thing to keep in mind is that if you give dogs or any other animal fruit or anything else like that, you can't give them too much. If you give them too much, even that can be not so good. It can make them sick or 
it can make them to four or whatever. So that's another important thing you need to keep in mind is even with certain foods like fruit, you have to be careful with that too. Even stuff like seeds can be bad for animals given what you research and of course depending on who the animal you know belongs to especially if it's like from a friend or acquaintance and also what they're eating and in case you guys didn't see the chocolate I have a chocolate bar right here so this one alone is also gonna be just a little example of something you don't want to feed them Another thing to keep in mind, especially in this day and age, is that a lot of people tend to have tablets and stuff. One of the things, especially for young animals or even curious ones, you want to make sure they don't do is get into certain items that they're not allowed to get into. Perfect example. Cell phones, wallets, anything like that. This is important because, especially because animals don't understand the concept of importance of objects and there are certain items like the cell phone and wallet that I just showed where if an animal were to get into that for example like the cell phone there's batteries in there that obviously are going to be dangerous if it were to be eaten by the animal um, which of course could send them to the vet or can cause internal damage wallets definitely because you have you know, money, you have cards, especially if it's your parents' wallet or something, you want to just make sure that that kind of stuff is not eaten by the animal. Cords are another one you want to watch out for. Keep in mind that a cord basically has wires inside of it, and that's something you don't want an animal to eat, trip over, or get hurt from in any way. This is why, especially when you clean up in certain rooms and you have cords lying on the floor, you want to either put them somewhere where the animal is not going to get into them or push them to the side or towards the back of whatever it is you're cleaning. And not only that, but even stuff like money is another key one, especially coins. Do not let animals eat money, especially stuff like this or paper money. Because paper money in general, keep in mind, that's printed ink on paper, which of course we use as currency and or money. So you definitely don't want them getting into that. And even swallowing something like coins, even a few can even cause problems inside the animal's body. And of course you want to make sure that your animal gets plenty of exercise. So walking, there's even dog treadmills that I've heard of. You can try and get them one of those. You can play tag, anything else like that. But you just want to make sure that your animal is healthy and that it gets lots of attention and plenty of love. In addition to everything else I've said, you also want to be careful with where you put not only certain objects, but even certain bits of clothes. For example, shoes, sneakers, and the like. I don't know if you guys can see these, but yeah, I'm showing you some uh, little uh, footwear that I have for when I want to walk around like if I'm in my pajamas or something. But still, stuff like that is certainly items you want to be careful of. Especially stuff like, you know, flip-flops or what I just showed you. Because a lot of times animals, when they feel the texture with their teeth... They'll often, cons they'll often not really eat it, but they think of it more of as a chew toy. And obviously, you don't want stuff like that getting ruined. That's why it's important to keep it somewhere safe so the animal doesn't get into it. And finally, before I end this video, I want to just inform you guys one last thing. Keep in mind that whenever you get an animal, it's not just a gift. It's a responsibility. It's a family member. And you are responsible for that animal. This isn't a toy or something you can just play along with. It's something that you need to make sure you take care of. You need to make sure they get exercise. You need to make sure they get fed, get water, whatever the requirements are. So that's another thing that you also need to be, need to be aware of uh, for the animal's sake and for your sake as well. And of course, if you have any questions, if you do own a dog, make sure you talk to your vet. Same with cats or any other animal that you own. To make sure that, you know, you're doing everything right. So, yeah, that's it. And have a good day.